Let's go. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Chrissy Chaos. I have my coffee in a bag from 787 Coffee, who does not sponsor the show, but they are Puerto Rican-owned business. So I support Puerto Rican-owned businesses, Boricua. okay? That's what it is. So I have a great guest on today. He's a DJ. He's very well-known. He is genderless. He's from New Jersey. His name is Julian Scanlon, but you may know him as Slushy. Yo! What's up, slushy baby, slushy bear? How are you? How you doing? Dude, you look like you're f fresh out of a protest. <laughs> yeah, yep, straight up. It's the, uh, it's the sneakers protest. What I like about guys like you, DJs and people are creative in the arts, is you don't ever wear clothes for the temperature it is. Because it's about 100 degrees outside and you're in a full bomber jacket with jeans. Black, and, but that's how musicians, that's how very artsy people are, is you don't. You'll wear what you want to wear when you want to wear it and not care about the weather, which I love. Yeah, it's well. And also growing up in Jersey, like mm -hmm. it, it was, you know, it's constantly cold during the winters. And sure. in L.A., it's kind of cold during the day now. So it's like a weird in the summertime. It's colder in the day in L.A. It's weird. It's really? like it's kind of it's kind of warm. But at the same time, it's like it's like A.C. weather, you know, like like right. A.C. boardwalk. Yes. Like sun's going down. It's a bit breezy. How did we lose you? How did the East Coast lose you to Los Angeles? Um, I wouldn't say the East Coast has lost me per se. I'm just kind of like I'm there for business right now. You know, okay. what I mean? like like, like I, I'm I'm in L.A. because music right now is like also in L.A. Got it. Mm -hmm. OK, so L.A. because a lot of comedy and they say entertainment movies and all that is moving out of L.A. Hollywood is like mm. crumbling, they say, but not music. You think music is it's it's. Still big in L.A. Yeah, I, I think, well, because all the studios are out there. Right. Know? So it's like all like like the record plant right. and like all the, the the famous spots. I mean, a lot of people are moving to Austin now, too, which is right. what I've noticed is like a lot of big like, time, you know, because it's like I, I've been there a few times and, and it's like, yeah, it's crazy how similar it's becoming to like L.A. as far as like. Right. Just like the I don't know, like 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 the Twitch streamers and like, right. you know, I think everybody's migrating, but it's cool. Now, are you do you have your hair? pink for Barbie and wearing a bomber jacket for Oppenheimer? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, but it's Barbieheimer, right? Yes. Is, is yes. that like the, 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 the fusion thing that <laughs> yes. they're doing? Yeah. Do, which one do you want? Which which one do you want to see more? Barbie Barbie or Oppenheimer? And then second follow-up question, mm -hmm. which one would you more most likely get a blowjob in the back of the theater in Barbie or Oppenheimer? <sighs> that's that's actually a tough one. It's tough, right? That's because, tough. Because let's break it down. If you want to get a blowjob in the back of Barbie, let's say that's fine, but there's probably children there. Right. And then if you want to get a blowjob in the back of an Oppenheimer, that's fine, but you're going to be coming to nuclear bombs, killing a lot of Japanese people. And Hans Zimmer's score. Yeah. I, yes. I don't know if you want to be fucking to Hans Zimmer. Yeah, you don't want that. But I mean, but what do you think you would go with? I'd, I'd say Barbie. Okay. Only because I'm, I'm a Margot Robbie fan. I mean, so, who is it? I mean, if, that, that's like, yeah. I mean, it's, if you're not a fan of Margot Robbie, you're gay. <laughs> Right? Guys, yeah. girls, you're yeah. just gay. Come on. That's what being gay is. It's not being a fan of Margot Robbie. Exactly. Margot. <laughs> Margot. <laughs> um, I think, dude, because what I like about what I'm excited about having you on is, too, is a lot of people don't get to know DJs. Like, mm -hmm. you don't know, you know, what... I mean, I know Marshmallow wears something on his head. You know, your face is out there. But, like, mm. a lot of people, like Calvin Harris, like, nobody knows... Nobody ever really talks to them. They kind of just play your music. You get to the next place and you go. But I'm excited to like get to know, like, how do you even become a DJ? Um, well, I was in a band in, in middle school. Okay. And like I, I played guitar. I sang for a little bit. And um, I got really into like Daft Punk and like uh, Dance Dance Revolution. Like, right. a, like a lot of like rhythm games. And by the way, I just want to give you a shout out. You survived middle school because yes. kids your age, 26 year olds, a lot of them don't make it through. So he's a shooting, a fentanyl overdose, a peanut <laughs> allergy. But that's the peanut I'm, allergy almost. Like. Dude, that's so the fact that you even made it this far is congratulations to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> but I mean, like, you know, it was just like like I uh I kind of fell into it. Okay. You know? Like I was I was like super set on being like like a front man in a band and like playing just in yeah. in a rock band and everything. And then I just kind of just EDM became like a bigger thing and I right. was just like this is this is it like 
this is my niche. Like, because you're this. still doing well with EDM because a lot of people have said that EDM kind of had its moment mm. five, <laughs> ten years ago, and now it's not the same. But you are still making it relevant. Well, I think it's like it 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 mutates, you know? Like it's right. it's not like EDM now is like just I feel like it's like become so pop integrated at this point. Okay. You know what I mean? Because it's like you you always hear like a, a, a Skrillex snare and like a random pop song or something right. or like a yeah. like a dubstep wobble. Like there's little traces of it now. And I right. feel like it's like kind of become a part of pop music in a way. Have you ever met the 1975? No, but I, I love the 1975. Right? Yeah. Well, why don't you do a song with the 1975? I would I would love to. That would be that would be. Why amazing. aren't they doing song? Why can't? Slushy in the 1975 make the intro to my podcast. Why hey. why can't that happen? It could happen. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Would you remix? Would you do a, a would you change the intro music for my podcast? Like just when you're in the yeah. hung over in the hotel one day. You, you want to know what's really, really fun? Like I, 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 I was gonna make a a remix for uh the Hey Babe theme song. You were? Yeah. I mean, just I, I still have time don't, for the show. Don't ask. Just do I'm it. Just and do it. Whatever you do, well, just because I got to be honest with you, every day when we start that podcast, mm. we have to sit there and think for 20 minutes about what Hey Babe song we're going to, you know, like remake and put Hey Babe in. It'd be nice to just have one that Slushy did that that's just yeah. the one we use always. Absolutely. And then if Sal doesn't want to use it on Hey Babe, I'll just use it on Chrissy Chaos, <laughs> even though this is not Hey Babe. I'll just no, use no, that I'll, intro I'll, song. I'll make both. I'll make, I'll make Dude, a Chrissy Chaos and a Hey Babe one. Vito, Vito, Vito's con like mafia connected, so we're going to hold you to this. I mean, let's get yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, Vito, Vito knows people in the street, so like if you don't do it. Now, let's, now let me ask you a question. What are you? Are you Puerto Rican? Are you white? Are you black? Are you a woman? What's going on? All the above. No, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm half Puerto Rican, half Italian. Whoa, like mm. my daughter. Hey, You're my daughter. Let's go. Dude, this is what, Dad? Hey, Delilah. <laughs> Where have you been? I love, dude. Wow, dude. Puerto Rican and Italian. That yeah. is a very East Coast mix. And I'm happy to see, bro, a lot of Puerto Rican people are doing well now. It's it's How, really cool. You guys are crushing. You got yeah. you, AOC, Mark Anthony, me. Mm -hmm. Um, who else? J Lo, uh, Bad Bunny, Bad Bunny, <laughs> J Balvin, J Balvin. Crushing so many it. Puerto Ricans, dude. It's a Puerto I Rican it. summer. Yeah, Fat Joe, uh, dude. Yeah, Daddy Yankee. Da is Daddy Yankee Is Daddy Yankee Puerto Yankee? Rican? I thought he was Dominican. He might be Puerto Rican. Please don't crucify me for. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Well, who like who's the, who would you say is like the biggest Puerto Rican? Daddy Yankee's yeah. Puerto Rican. Yeah, see, hey, Slushy yeah, knows his Puerto yeah, Ricans. Let's go. Um, who do you? How come they don't have Daddy Mets? Who do you? <laughs> who who? What like musician have you worked with that like blew your mind? Like who is number one? Um, with no disrespect to anyone else, dude. I meeting. I met Justin Bieber once. Oh my god! And that was just like the most surreal. Like. There's the weird, like, but good, good weird, like just the most surreal experience in the because world. Because he's like so famous, right? Like, I don't even know. Like, I almost think like he, like, like if you were to smell his butt, it smells like plastic. Like, like he's just a doll, he you just know? smells like the Christmas tree uh, yes. air freshener. Like he has no sense. He has no bodily functions. Like he was designed <laughs> for human consumption <laughs> and that's it. Like he's not real, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's essentially what happened, you know? Uh, what happened? When did you guys meet? How'd you guys meet? So I was in a, I was in a studio session with, um, Rudy Mancuso, who does like a lot of like the awkward, he does a show called Awkward Puppets. Okay. And I think uh, Bieber was just like there because they're managed by this. They were managed by the same people at the time. Okay. Um, and he just rolled up in the studio just randomly, while while we we were just like it was a totally unrelated session. And right. He just shows up and and everything stops and it's right. just like. It Justin Bieber like Justin, Justin Bieber, Bieber just walks in. Just walks in. And did did he watch you? Did he watch you guys like do your thing? Well, he walks up to me. He goes, "Hey, man, I like your hair." Whoa, was it pink at the time? It was. It was green. It was green. okay. But okay. And, then, and then he proceeds to go. Uh, and this is this is a direct quote. I want to drink dark liquor and fight someone. Brb. That's what he said. And he walks out of the room. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Well, how was, long ago was that? This was. Oh, this was like five. Six years ago. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, but, I want to drink dark liquor and fight someone. And ha I mean, he was what, like twenty years old then, right? Yeah, but I mean, s sweetheart, like, yeah, it's so nice. Like, like, uh, they, you know, everybody has like a Justin Bieber good or bad story. He was super nice to everybody. Yeah, like, like, uh, you know, in the studio that day, and it was like, 
It's really nice. He he um came into a comedy club once when he was dating Selena Gomez. So this is like 10 years ago. And the comedy mm. club told all the comics, listen, he, him and Selena Gomez are sitting in the back of the comedy club. Do not call attention to them. Do not say they are obviously two of the most famous people in the whole world. Mm. They just want to have a quiet night. Their security is outside. Do not mention that they're there. Just do the show. So the thing is, when you tell comedians that, the very first thing they're going to do is say, and I'm, I'm talking about within 20 seconds, the MC of the show oh, made no. a Bieber, Selena Gomez joke, and they walked out. Oh, and, my God. And we were all, and it's so f stupid how, like, our minds are, because we were all mad at the MC, because we wanted to be the first ones to make the joke. And we all think in our heads, like, oh, if Bieber and Selena Gomez see us, this will be our big break. And it's like, what are they going to do if they like your comedy? Put you in, what are you going to have, a fucking be in a relationship with them? Are they going to put you in one of their songs? You're a comedian, you stupid <laughs> asshole. There's nothing they could do other than laugh at your jokes, maybe. But I remember, dude, he walked out. He was angry. He was fucking angry oh. because he was like, I just want to. And then I went to another comedy club. I think I went to two or three comedy clubs that night, and every single club, the same thing happened. They just kept being like, you're right there. You're right there. That's so fucked. That, I would do that with you, dude. If you I walked mean, in, I, I'd well, be like, I, I, would, I would stay front and center. You would, you know? dude. Yeah. Julian Scanlon. I feel like the name is the first name's Puerto Rican, the last name's not even Italian. It's Irish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like um. Well, so I'm like half Puerto Rican, then half just everything else. You know, just half just white, half mutt. Yeah, yeah. Just like. Uh, I so think. what do you, what do your parents say when you're like, listen, I'm a DJ? Um. Well, so my mom's actually a singer. My both parents are singers. Really? So they did like a, a freestyle. In the '90s. Oh, that's the best. That's yeah. and that's very Puerto Rican. A super dude. That's super what we listen to in my house. Oh, is Puerto yeah. Rican freestyle. Boom. Yeah, boom. Like, like the the Planet Rock beat. Yeah, hundred yeah. so percent. So that's, that's what your parents did. Mm -hmm. Wow. And mm -hmm. so wait, who's Puerto Rican? Your mom or your dad? My dad. Your my dad's dad. Puerto Rican. So he mm -hmm. was doing the freestyle music too. He was singing. Mm -hmm. And your mom was also just a singer. Yeah. So uh, so both of them, you know, uh, both of them were professional singers, and I kind of just, you know, uh, in inherited, I guess the. The musical gene. Yeah. And then, so what do you do like on the road? Like, do you read? Do you, what do you do? Uh, listen to a lot of podcasts, audiobooks. Right. Um, I play a lot of 2048, you know, like the, like the, the, the swipe game. No, I don't uh, even know that game. It's like, uh, dude, 2048, it's called? It's a, bro, it's, uh, so I will listen to your podcast and play 2048. And it's like the most, it's like my brain goes ADHD. Right. You know, but it, like, so you, you literally just swipe. And what's the point of this game? You're trying to get the number 20 or 48? Well, so it's like you multiply 16, 32, 64. Oh, okay. You so you keep just going up. So you got to be smart to do this game. Well, I mean, I'm an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but like, but my thing is like, I'll, I'll, I'll just listen to music or podcaster and, and I don't know, like, like, cause so I, I'm, I'm also on the autism spectrum. So I've okay. got Asperger's and right. ADHD. You need a help. You want a helmet? Uh, yeah, I would love a helmet. Would, That'd be great. Helmet, it would be awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but like, but my, my, so my thing is like, you know, I just, I, I process information in a very weird way. Okay. So like, I love just overstimulation. So I'll just like listen to a podcast. I'll just have like 2048 right. going. Just, just go. When did you get diagnosed with autism? Uh, when I was like 11, 12. How did yeah. you know? How did you, what, what were you doing that your parents were like, I think he could be autistic? Um, it was, it was a lot of like, like late like social development and okay. like, you know, uh, like, cause I, I just like always kind of just had a hard time like connecting with people. And that's right. how, I, that's a, an, another way that I got into music was like music for me was like a, like a, like a, like my first language in a way, got it. you know? Cause like, like I just, if, if I, if I, if this was 10, 15 years ago, this, I, I, w I would be like, you wouldn't be able to t say or do anything, anything. Right. But like now I, I kind of like had to, you know, in middle school, high school, I learned how to like people watch and, right. and um, I had to kind of like learn right. social skills. Got it. So you, Vito's taking notes. So you, <laughs> yeah. he's like, this is me. This is also me. <laughs> um, so, so do you, you, do you think that um, you're being on the spectrum? Like, I feel like you are one of those people that, you found like something that was a little different about you and you created art from it. Like, mm. like, do you think like you had to force yourself 
to do that and think about like how can I make this work for me? Or you think because of your spectrum disorder, that just led you to be the, the DJ? I think it was just like and, and I've been I've been thinking about this a lot recently. Like like why why did I get into music? You know, like like right. like, like how did I end up like just down this path, you know right. what I mean? Like I've just been thinking about that a lot recently because like like I don't know, honestly. I, I'm just like like I, I if it's fun, that's the most important part. Yeah. But like uh I don't know. Yeah, I, you seem like a person who you re won't you'll do what you want to do every day and you're not really motivated by the money more of like just living life having fun because when you texted yeah. me before you were like oh i'm hung over i'm hung over about to do a podcast for like for comics for me i would be like oh that would i was almost going to text you like dude don't even worry about it like go rest and then you'd be like all right i'm so sorry and then we'll do it another time but you it wasn't that you were like no i want to just i want to yeah. i'm just letting you know i'm hung over because you're like getting the high off life right now and like you're appreciating everything you have which is like a really good thing well, you have uh, gratitude yeah well and and like this moment right here, yeah. you know, this is, this is, this is fun. And this yeah. is like, you know, I, I could have been hung over and just slept, but no. like, what is that going to, what are you going to sleep and jerk off? I mean, you know, I mean, yeah, but like, yeah, <laughs> you know? I mean, how many times can you jerk off to 2048? It starts to fucking hurt after a while. Exactly, you know what I mean? like, dude. You got, but that's what I'm saying. Like, like it's, I think a lot being in the present is like the hardest thing to do in life. Everybody who's walking on the street knows they should be being in the present. We all know, yeah. we've all heard the same sayings, but the ones, the people who can actually do it mm -hmm. is such a low percentage of people, but that's like the only real way to be happy is just like be in the moment. Any type of anticipation is gonna take you out of the happiness or looking back into the past. It's all. If you're in the present, there's like no pain, there's no problems because you're just like living in the moment. Yeah. And I don't know that you know you or I are are, are there, but you're more. Th you're very much. You're a lot closer than most 26 year olds because that's where you are. 26, Maybe. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. May first. Whoa, May first. You turn 26, mm -hmm. and you're a 26 year old that I feel like you just get because a lot of that generation of like the kids in the mid 20s to like mid 20 to 30, typically like those are the kids that grew up like right when like the world really changed when like Trump got elected, when like mm -hmm. all these movements started happening. And it's sometimes it, it's like a destabilized person you're dealing with now where you're like, yeah. they don't even know what the fuck they want. But mm -hmm. you seem pretty stable, even though you have pink hair, you're wearing glasses <laughs> yeah. and it's 95 degrees outside and you're dressed in a full winter outfit. But you do <laughs> seem stable and you don't have shoelaces. <laughs> you have your shoes tied on with ropes that I fucking Ooh, that go. you that you autoerotic asphyxiate yourself with. Of course. Um, but I, yeah, but you are. So where do you think that stability comes from? Is your like... Um, parents, def definitely my mom for sure. Cause it was like, I, I was always raised, you know, on the golden rule, which treat, is what treat people, how you want to be treated. Nice. So I, I like at a very early age, I just realized like, not that we're all the same, but we're, we're all fighting essentially the same rat race. Like right. we're, we're all, we're all going to die. Yep. But, yep. but we might as well enjoy the time that we have here. Right. You know what I mean? So like, that's why I try to enter every new situation just like, Same. you know, just... Well, th I think that's the thing people forget, too, is we all have the same desires. Like, mm. you know, you might think that, like, somebody who is so opposite than you, like somebody who grows up in, like, you know, like, grew up in, like, the jungle of some country, they have the same desire as you. They just have a different geography mm. and a different ways of getting there. But, like, they still want, like, love. They still have fear. There's still sadness. It's like, yeah. you know, like these... I think sometimes, like especially in American culture, like you, like, uh, you know, we'll think about like, uh, you know, a third world country or like a country in the Middle East that gets bombed all the time or kids growing up in Syria. And you're mm. like, think like, oh, they must be like more battle. They must not think like, it's like, no, no, no. They're living a nightmare. They think exactly mm. like your five-year-old thinks or your 20-year-old thinks. They're just living in a nightmare place where like they're throwing acid at, at you. That's what it, that's the only difference. Yeah. So I think when you that's that's good that you know that because a lot of people I think just and that's and that's where kind of I'm not being grateful like then then you start to be like I want to just get rid of the things that I have or I, I'm not grateful for what I have because you you stop realizing like yo I'm so privileged to live the life that I have just yeah. just being in America you're like doing better than literally ninety percent of the world I was thinking the exact same thing yeah like, like having like traveled outside right you know it's like 
we're so blessed to have been born here with a passport. Yes. And yeah, just I, I would have had such a more difficult time. Right. Doing any kind of music, anything I feel. If, Dude, if, my U.S. passport is so valuable. I would I would microchip it in me. Yeah. I would. That's the only thing I'd microchip. I, honestly, honestly, like with with like global access and like being yeah. able to just kind of walk through, bro. Okay, so I I just came back from Asia and nice. I did the mobile passport. I got through customs in thirty seconds. Really, thirty it, it in was, the U.S. side or Asia side? You're saying uh, U, U.S. side. So right. it wasn't wasn't that impressive. But thirty seconds. But I still yeah. I I just walked right through because you have global entry. Well, no, no, no. So, so there's, there's like an What's app. What's the on mobile the, passport? It's like a mobile app that you can get. So if you're, if you're, let's, it works even if you go to like Canada. Let's say. Okay. Um, Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Vancouver. I'm. <laughs> yeah. No. Uh, shout out Canada. Your your whole country's on fire right now. But we've never seen any pictures of it. Coincidence? Fauci did it. Go ahead. But um, <laughs> like a uh, fuck. Uh, 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 the passport. The passport thing. Your okay. autism's kicking in. It's it's the ADHD and the autism yeah, at the same. They're it. they're they're battling. And the and the rum coffee from seven eight seven coffee. Just, they support autism awareness as all Puerto Ricans do. Let's go. <laughs> There's no very little uh, autistic people in Puerto Rico. Really? Maybe it's the adobo. I don't know. Maybe that's, adobo that's fights point. autism. That's the cure. Just rub your kids, baptize them in adobo. And if you don't know what adobo is, stop listening to this podcast and fucking Google it. Yes. Adobo on tostones? Yes. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? It's come in diarrhea. That's what would happen to me. The passport app. Yes. Uh, uh, it's. If, I think if you type mobile passport control on okay. the app store. Here it is. Um, you can essentially enter your passport details and just walk right through. You just show yeah. Because it, it like automatically scans your ID and stuff like that. Okay. So like you literally just walk right up and they, they're like, okay, you... You have your QR already, and you just walk right in. You're good. It's better than global entry. Like my fiance, it's awesome. If my fiance has global entry, we literally uh, we hit the runway. The, I mean, we land in the runway. The second we land, I put my stuff in there, and then I breeze through customs, and she still has to go to the computer, put everything in. Really? It's, yeah. So the it's, mobile passport app is what it's about. It's clutch. Dude. It's I used so that fast. Back from Italy. I used to get back from France. Like it's it's amazing. And it's just the app, and then you just have to put in your yeah. passport info. Yeah. It's so easy. Yeah. Oh, wow. But you still have to wait on that line, though. No. no. You, you literally walk. So, so there's a separate line now just for the mobile thing, and it's always, like, empty. empty because so why it, would know. people, everybody not, if this is access to every, is it just because people don't know about it? Yeah. It's kind of like like clear. If you like, like, yeah. like, clear was the best thing in the world. But now there's a line for clear. Because now everybody knows about it. Right. So it's like it, everybody thinks it's the fastest way to do it now. So it's become like the now now there's clear traffic. Clear still better right. than TSA pre though. Like oh yeah, yeah. no for sure. TSA pre is basically I, I don't I don't have TSA pre. I don't plan on getting it because it's gotten so bad. But clear still seems like it might be worth it because clear is still mm -hmm. better than pre uh, TSA pre. TSA pre yeah, is only good because you don't have to take your shoes off. Yeah, that's and, the only and thing. Your laptop you can leave in for most of that. Oh, can you? Okay, yeah. Yeah, my shoes, I have such horrific feet, though, that I feel like even if I didn't have TSA pre, they'd be like, just keep your shoes on. Bro, last night, so... so. I, yeah, tell us about last night, because you're hungover. I want to know what happened. You have sex. There was a moment, like, <laughs> there was a moment last night, so I... I, I, I when, I, when, I was in, uh, when I was in Asia, I dropped a full glass water bottle on my big toe. What? Ooh. You cut yourself in Asia. <laughs> I dropped it, deaded the big toenail Fuck. cuticle. Because they could smell American blood, yeah. Asians. They're like sharks. They smell it in the water, and they know that you're American. And then I got kicked And they out, want your secrets. Kicked out right away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I want to talk to you about Morgan & Morgan. Let me tell you something, folks. Submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is so easy. It's more like using an app than hiring a lawyer. Submitting a claim to Morgan & Morgan is as easy as, I don't want to say your mother, but your mother. Submitting a claim to Morgan & Morgan is as easy as pretending you didn't see that 5 p.m. email from your boss when I know you did, you piece of garbage. Morgan & Morgan submitting a claim is as easy as hitting snooze on your alarm for the eighth time, which is what happened after the meal I just ate. Let me tell you something. If you get injured, Morgan & Morgan is America's largest injury firm. They have over 100 offices nationwide and more than 800 lawyers. That's a lot of avocados. With over $15 billion recovered for clients, Morgan Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you full and fair compensation. Yeah! If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free, unless they win. 
For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash chaos or dial pound law, that's pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R, the people, dot com, slash chaos, or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. Uh, so Red, white, and blue. The toe came off, or the, the uh, toenail came off three nights ago. Oh. Just, uh... Not good. I don't know. I don't know if you've seen David Goggins' feet. Yes, I have. I think I'm. I think I'm one step away from. So you have no big toenail right now. It's gone. It's disgusting. It's it's gross. Real? Do you want to show it? I mean, do you want to see it? I yes. I mean, if you want, I mean, you don't have to take it off. But if you want to just take your big toe out, we will zoom in on it, yeah, go. and we will right, put it. Right. We will put it in the thumbnail that you don't have. Oh my Your God. big toe. There it is. Here, here. By the way, look at these slushy shoes, folks. Look at these puppies. They're I mean, like, they're like moon boots. dude, these are sick fucking moon boots. And I like that they're gen. These, you don't know. These could be a man's foot, a woman's foot. To- this, here we go. Here's oh, Tola no. slushy. Oh, it's, it's, it looks really bad. I want to see it. It looks really bad. I want to see it. <laughs> Ta da! Oh, oh my God. That's so, disgusting. It's so bad. It looks like you have frostbite. I know. So, wait a second. It, so, it you, doesn't hurt, though. So, you, you, you're, you the glass dropped. Okay, but then how did it cut your toenail? Why would your toenail fall off? Okay, so here's the thing. It dropped and hit right here. Okay. It deaded the cuticle immediately. Oh, shit. So the, the, the toenail died immediately. Immediately dead. Gray a minute after. I got to say, though, your other four toes on that foot look pretty decent. I mean, you know. They my, look good. You got good feet. I was going to start an OnlyFans. And everything. Yes. <laughs> Is that a thing? Do you think people with on the spectrum have good feet? Um, I, mean, <laughs> I wonder. I wonder if there's a stat on that. Yeah, like, I want to. Yeah, I let's pull up. Let's see if autistic people's do they have good feet. Um, I'm I'm so sorry to anybody who has seen the seen this. By listen, the way, listen. The amount of creeps we have. My fans are creeps. They all have foot fetishes. They probably they're gonna you're gonna be on Wiki Feet now. Just know oh. that you're on Wiki Feet, dude. Okay, okay. <laughs> Could you imagine slapping foot on Wiki Feet? I'm gonna be like 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 yeah. three three out of ten for yeah. the, for the for the toe. Um, wait. So you're in Asia. Did mm-hmm. you wait? So you just when did you get back from Asia? Like. Three three weeks ago. Okay, so yeah. it takes a little while to acclimate time wise there, right? Yeah, well, so it's like it's it, where I was. I was in Hong Kong. It's exactly twelve hours ahead from okay. New York time. So I was like, it was weird, but it wasn't like like in Europe. It's like seven hours ahead. Yeah, so, so you have to do like math and shit in your head. Yeah, this is like okay, it's twelve. It's also twelve. Right. Do you now? Do you because you're on the spectrum? Are you just? Do you know how to just solve Rubik's cubes? I actually can't solve a Rubik's cube. What? I so then can't. maybe you're not on the spectrum, dude. Maybe maybe a uh, doctor gave me a false, yeah, <laughs> a false prognosis or something. <laughs> I don't think they. You sh- thank God because in Asia you can't be open about being on the spectrum. They will not. They'll kill you in Asia. It's it, it, like firing squad on site. One hundred percent. Asians do not allow disabilities. Wow. You didn't see any disabled people in Asia. Did you see anybody in a wheelchair? Anybody with Down syndrome? Anybody? No, dude. They're in line. Wow. It's what it is, bro. It's not my rules. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> no. Dude, you're the only one. I think that you could literally... Would you DJ a show in North Korea for Kim Jong-un? For sure. You would, right? Yeah. I feel like you're a guy that people would just be like, you know what? I fucking like... I want you to represent America overseas. Because you I'd are be America. Well, I, I feel like... like I'm just I'm just a guy that presses buttons for fun, Dude, but listen, but but I'm having fun. <laughs> you you know? got you're got your your bunch of different nationalities. Mm. Okay. You dress for all different types of weather. Um, your 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 body is. We don't know if you're in, in good shape or bad shape. You're you're hiding it. Ambiguous. Ambiguous. Yeah, ambiguous. You're racially ambiguous. You're sexually ambiguous. We don't know if you're gay, straight. You're in the middle. You look like you're you're you have protest hair, but you're from New Jersey, so they would they would want it. They typically don't protest. So you're Republican and Democrat at the same time. And you have, you're very close to getting your foot amputated. We have a diabetes crisis. Exactly. And you have the toenail thing. You're mm-hmm. America, dude. Yeah. I like it. I'm down. So <laughs> you, sounds great. when you fly to Asia, do you go first class? What do you do? Um, usually on the way there, but like on, like when we're going in between cities. You can't. Usually just, just, just cause it's like they're, they're hour flights, but like a 13 hour flight. You have to. At that point. Cause you're, cause you're already spending like a few grand to get there. Right. So it's like. Just pay a little bit just more. Just pay a, a little extra. You get a meal and everything. Now, and you're getting, do you get paid in, when you get paid, do you get paid in Hong Kong money? Uh, I actually, honestly, I don't know. 
Uh, you I, just let you just leave it up to your business manager. And yeah, see, they're, I, and I they're it, stealing your money, dude. Yep, they're, I'm, they've taken it all. Totally broke. Seriously, <laughs> they've taken it. There's you got to know what. No, it's a direct wire, I, I believe, uh, okay. and and it and it, it like the currencies transfer over. Got it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, because that's the thing when you go to these other countries, you got to know. Hey, am I getting paid here in America, or am I getting paid in? In your currency, because if it, right. your, their currency, you know what I mean. Like, there's a huge transfer rate for some of these, like, like, uh, like bot, which I think is like Thailand. Yeah, it's. I think it's like eight hundred to one or something like that. Or what? I, 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 I don't know if that's true, but like, right. it's, but the, the exchange rate's crazy on it. So like, so you're saying like eight hundred bots is one dollar? I I believe so. It, it's something crazy. So it's like that. it's like I could be in Thailand and be like, I just want to have a fun night with a lady boy, and she could be like, oh. 25,000 bots and I'd be like are you fucking kidding me but it's really only a few dollars well yeah, well, yeah. so like the yeah. crazy part is like when I ordered like like I, I got a massage at the hotel nice. a, a normal massage at the hotel really uh, and it was they do that there yeah shockingly wow. <laughs> dude weed is legal there weed is legal in Hong Kong in Thailand in Thailand like Bro, fully legal there are over 5,000 dispensaries in Thailand. I think it just got legalized. And good shit, too. We're not talking about the bullshit. Bro, California shit. Wow. Like, I was shocked. Oh, my God. Now, do you have a girlfriend, boyfriend? What's your, what's your, what's your I, thing? I, well, so, I am, I'm straight. I am single. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you're straight. Uh, I'm single. Okay. Um, straight and single. Newly single, but I... S Let's go. Bring her in. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's so because it's got now. Let's just be honest. You're a world known, world traveling DJ. It's got to be pretty fun to be single, right? I mean, to be in a relationship doing that is it's very difficult. Yeah, yeah. You're 26. I think this is the time you do it. I'm well, because now, well, like my, I'm a very like. I feel like I'm a very old person on the inside. Like I feel like an old man. You know, right. like I'm very like. I just want to go home, right. sit on the couch, play Fortnite, do nothing else. You right. know? So like, like what, as old men do, they love Fortnite. Just love Fortnite. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I've had like ex girlfriends in the past where it's like, all right, let's go to bed at nine p.m. and I'm like, I, I have like a deadline for a song. I'm gonna be mixing loud music until three a.m. Right. This obviously isn't gonna work. Right. You know, or. But so, oh, so you're saying, yeah, because that's an interesting thing, because. Because I, you know, co comedy is a, a late night activity and I have children. So I mm -hmm. like last night, no shows, no nothing. I, we watched, um, we, I, you ready for a fun fact? You're from New Jersey. Yeah. I just, for the very first time in my life, I'm talking about the very first time in my life on two days ago, watched the movie, The Karate Kid. Mm -hmm. I had never seen The Karate Kid one, two or three. I never seen one second of them. Bro. Not at all. But then I watched them all. Yeah. Of course, got hooked like the rest of the world has been since the 80s. I just never watch it. And I was watching Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai Co is insane. So Cobra bro. Kai. So we love Cobra Kai. And I was yeah. watching it with my family. And, you know, we had to put the kids to bed at, you know, it was a weekend night. So 8.30. We, mm -hmm. Normally it's 7.30, but 8.30. I was fully, like fully asleep at 9.15 last night on a Friday night. Woke up at 5 a.m. today. And I was just up. Because, because when I don't have the shows, my body, my natural mm -hmm. state is the same, like an old man. Yeah. Where I just want to go to bed, but my career doesn't allow that. So you're the same then. Yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to be doing a show tonight that starts at 11 p.m. But that's just when the show starts. So you got to do it. It's the job. Right. Know? Like like that. Like, and that's like my favorite. I've always been such a big comedy fan for those same reasons. Like right. I feel like the whole uh, like we have a lot of the same kind of like. I feel like struggles, mm -hmm. you know, like I'm, I, you know, and again, just, just speaking from personal experience, it's like, I, I, I tend to harbor a lot of self doubt, right? but it's like, it's like, it's half imposter syndrome. Cause it's like, it's like, it's, I know what I'm doing. Right. right. But then half of it is like, but what if I secretly don't know what I'm like, you know, it's like a right. little like, uh, but that, but I feel like, like every, every artist has that to some extent where it's like, so what, like, like, so like what happens when you're. Like you're tired, right? You're you're not mm -hmm. feeling good. You got to wait all day to your show at eleven o'clock. Can you, as a DJ, just mail it in because you're just playing the songs and just make believe you care, but you're just mailing it in? Or you can't do that. Um, I can I can do it to an extent, but there's like there's definitely like, you know, there's definitely moments in the set where like if I'm not like because because the crowd could feed off of of right. your, your energy completely. So it's like if if you do a bit and you're just like 
like you just do a deadpan right. and not with your usual cadence, like right. the crowd's going to notice that. Well, like, well, what's a DJ bit? Like what, like, what do you do? Like, what, like when you're thinking hmm. of a show, how do you even design the show? Because to me, as the audience member, I'm having a great time, but I'm like, oh, they must have just their tracks playing in a certain, you know, uh, uh, rhythm, a certain order. But then the other parts of the show that make you guys stand out, like, how do you think of that stuff? It's a, well, so a, a lot of it is in these things called edits, which are okay. like, like matchups, essentially. Right. Um, I'm not a retard. I know what edits are. <laughs> Not you. Um. <laughs> so like, so edits. Uh, I'm I'll, I'll kiss you. I love you. But, but, <laughs> but um, well, so, so so basically, like like making a bit music style right. would be like, you know, uh, 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 Backstreet Boys yeah. dropping into like uh, turn down for what or something. Okay. You know, it, it, I like. It, oh, that sounds good. Like so so a lot of my set is like is you know that that was a bad example, but like I I was just, into it. <laughs> yeah, you were like I was going through it in my head. Um, trying to figure out like, like what moment is going to kill, you know what I mean? Like, right. like, like this build up into this drop specifically yeah, because it just takes the energy up here and then you pay it off with right. like the drop people just like that, that, like, that's the smoke really, like, pops out. Yeah. Like you have that. To, do you have to do like a run through? Like you have a show tonight at Lavo, mm. right? Which I know this episode's coming out in two weeks, but we're going to go to the show. Do you like, so do you have to get there at like two hours before to like go through the sound and the, the core, core choreography of it all? Uh, yeah. Well, so eight o'clock is sound check. So we'll, we'll go make sure that like the, like the smoke works and everything. And that like, right. um, cause sometimes we'll show up and then like one of the CDJs will just be broken. Right. And like, I have to just go off a of three or two, but that, that's like, that's at every club worldwide. Right. Like there's always going to be, there's always issues like that randomly. Right. Um, so it's like, but, but I, I feel like it's, it's like the same with, with like comedy, right? Yeah. Like, like sometimes the mics are broken or. Yeah. But you know, but it's interesting because with comedians, there I am. Um, you look, oh, you look great. Slushy? Yeah. Oh, there it is. I love it. <laughs> I love, yeah. There it is. That guy's having a good, that's guy. That, is this the Asian show? Um, I, oh, <laughs> where are you, Spain? This is Miami. Ooh. So like, see you, see like that, it's a different thing for me because like, I'm just up there doing my stand up. It's like really just the microphone needs to work. I don't have any other types of things going on. It's just kind of like, you know, I have to kind of always be like, if I wasn't feeling well, like I have to like, cause it's just me on stage. Right? You gotta mm. be like present. It's fucking exhausting. But yeah. I would assume it's the same thing. Like when you do a set like this, you're exhausted. After yeah. Like you can't do two shows in a night. I, yeah, no, I, I, you give I, it your I all for one. I tried and, and it that was work. just like, I, by the end of it, like never again. Yeah. A couple, cause some DJs have like, like crazy endurance. They'll play for like six, seven hours. What I, did you, I, what's your show? Two hours? Like hour and a half, two hours. See, I like yeah. hour and a half is a sweet spot for mm -hmm. everything. I honestly, I'm sort of think comedy is, should be like an hour because with your, you don't mm. lock people's phones up, right? Like people can have their phones out and stuff. Yeah. So see, that's the thing is mm. with music, right? With your, with your profession, it's like I could be, I'll be on your show tonight and I might be vibing to the music, having the greatest time, but I could be looking at my phone and still vibing, playing 2048, still vibe, but I'm yeah, loving it. Yeah. Where if you're doing that in comedy, you'll miss mm. my material. You will not be laughing and be, if you miss mm. one, if you miss one word of what I said, the joke is probably over for you because it all leads up to the punchline where music I can vibe in and out and still have 100% a great time. Mm. So I think for with our ADHD society and all that, like I'm starting to think my comedy shows, like I want them to be an hour total, yeah. like have one opener and then I do 40 minutes and like let you get back to your phone, like kind of like, you know, hit them, like rather than just trying to do everything. I feel like sometimes people just do things because they think like, oh, the audience wants to be here for two hours. I got to give them a two hour show. It's like, no, you don't. You got to give them a good experience. Quality yeah. over quantity. That, well, and that's the thing too. Like crowd killing is a thing. Like where, like if you go too hard, like let's say my hour and a half is like just dubstep, dubstep. Du right. There doesn't give them any room to breathe. You right. know? So it's like, you're, you're totally right. Like giving them that space to just like kind of have a breather so they can kind of get revamped again. Right. You know, it's, that's yeah. so important. Cause is like, this when you met Justin Bieber, that was your hair, the green. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So it was like uh like minty green. Yeah, dude. I, I mean, you, it, it does look awesome. Like you have to feel like, I can't believe I'm doing this. Right. Do you feel, do you get those moments when you're on big oh, yeah. stage like that? Every, every single show I, I get a mixture of being like that, like nervous because like, so 
the first show I ever did, I, I booked a, a, a small bar in New Jersey on a okay. Sunday. Okay. When I I'll was be in, performing there this weekend. <laughs> hey, hey, hey music. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> nobody, nobody came. I right. booked it, and it was while I was in, in middle school. Still, I had like you, no no hold fans. On. Your first show you ever did was when you were in middle school. Well, I wanted to get into the business, so I was wow. like, I was calling people, going, "Can I, can I just play?" And I didn't understand that that I that you had to invite people and like. Right. Get, get the word out. So it was like, you know, uh, nobody came. So like from then on, I had this like. So what did you do? You just did you just it got canceled. I just went home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But from then on, it was like, it, is every show going to, you know, like, 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 like that, that, that set a precedent in my mind so that every time I go right before I go on stage, there's a split second where I'm like, what if I go up there and nobody's there? Right. So I, I always have that little. But little that inkling. in turn gives you the gratefulness when you see it's sold out or yeah. a huge crowd. Because you're like, holy stuff. But wait a second. So when you're in middle school, you're talking about 12, 13 years old. What was going to be your plan if people were there? Did you have a set list? Yeah. And But you had never DJed or done anything before. Well, so when I was like like 12, 13, I was in that band. And then oh, that's right. 13 to like... So it might have been like like freshman year of high school. Right. That sounds about more, more accurate. Because the middle school, I was in the band. Right. Um, but it was like in the very beginning before like... Before I really even learned how to produce. So it would have been like a shit show anyway. anyway. Right. By the way, that's where all the big money is, right? In producing, right? Isn't that like in music? That That's where like you're going to, if you're going to fucking, I feel like all the people that make it like huge, huge hmm. financially, they're all big producers, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Cause well, cause it's like, then it's like your, your, your sound is just like your footprints right. everywhere. You right. Know? You're and you're like a guy who produces, you can sing You're you're, you're this show's Kanye West. What? Without the comments. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, cause you know, I, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, you know, to, to, I like to kind of, um, uh, talk to people who are like in like our arts are like adjacent, right? It's like, yeah. I don't do exactly what you do, but I, I totally understand your lifestyle. I told, it's like the same venues, even like yeah. performing at, like there's different, you know, things to do. What's the biggest venue you ever done? Most people, um, biggest, uh, I think either EDC Mexico or EDC Vegas. And how much was Mexico? And like, what were what were we, what are we talking? Uh, I don't remember. Mexico Vegas was I think seventy thousand. Woo! Which was like I don't even remember that set. That's a ton, that is a ton of fucking people. I don't um, remember that set at all. I uh, <laughs> I like blacked I, yeah. out. <laughs> I know my you, one of your biggest fans is actually my tour manager. Oh, his sick. name's Tommy. He's like you, num like that's how I first heard about you mm -hmm. and then it was so random he told me about you like he told me about you um uh and i was like oh shit and started listening and he would listen to you on the road and he's like i fu like truly like your number one fan like he's That's going awesome. tonight i'm well, he's gonna come with me but he was already going let's go so he was uh, he was like i'm he's a huge fan and then and then when you when we connected he like could and he was supposed to come today to the show but he he, he texted me he said uh some things came up, so I wasn't able to make it today. But I, I, it's probably it's probably that he was he might have been doing ecstasy last night. He wow. might have been he might be fully hung up, or he's in jail. He might uh, this might be the one text because the kid is fucking wild. You have some wild fans. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things get nuts. Like your show tonight is going to start at eleven. What time are you actually going to go on? I believe twelve thirty. And then what time is it realistically going to end? Three. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm not coming. There's no way I can make it till 11. There's no way I can make it till 1230. I'm going to get my friends in. And yeah. I'm going to yeah. pass out. Yeah. Or can I sleep in your green room? Can of I course. nap? All right, then, yeah. uh, then I'll come. Nap. And then, I'll, yeah. have, I'll have a blanket and pillow ready. Seriously. And then, yeah. And then wake me up when you go on and we'll fucking have fun. Yeah. Because go, Chris, I'm Chris, going on. Why are you doing uh, Lavo in New York? What is it about that venue? Um, I, I just, I love the towel group. Uh, yeah. you know, they're, they've been you really love Asians. Yeah. Uh, well, Tao and, uh, uh, great restaurant as well. Oh, hell yeah. Have, have you had the giant, uh, fortune cookie? Yes. Bro. Sick. Insane. Wait. Oh, so Lavo's in Tao. Yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah, realize yeah. that. So I think it's, uh, uh, the, uh, Tao and then there's, there, there's an Italian restaurant, I believe. So uh, what time should I get there tonight? Um, if it starts at 11, but you're, what time are you going to get there? I'm probably going to get there at like 12. Okay. I want to walk in with you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm going to be on edibles, too. That's Dude, okay, right? Honestly, I might bring edibles, too. Wow. Maybe I want to do your... Are you, do, you have, do you have the, the edibles from Thailand? No, dude, I wish. Oh, yeah. my God. That would be so <laughs> sweet. That would be so sweet. Wait, so did you have a show last night, too? 
No, no, no. Okay, I, I, just I, went I, ha- out hanging out. I flew in early because well, if I would have flown in this morning, right, I would have just been like a piece of shit by twelve o'clock. Yeah. What's up, guys? Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, so you flew in early for the podcast. Yeah. That's nice. Of course. Are you playing any of your new music? You were telling us before the pod oh, yeah. you had a new song or yeah. some yes. issues with the new song. Past was, yeah, what's going on? Because I'm hearing it everywhere, and, but and now people don't know it's you. So uh, I initially released the, uh, the song in 2020 for free. Okay. Um, it, it samples a song by a band called Borns called Past Lives. Yes. Um, and some, you know. Which it, I it, believe in, by the way. Yeah, me too. Like 100%. reincarnation. Yes, like hundred percent. Totally. It was one of the reasons I picked the sample because, like, I, yeah. I, I, you know, I saw it. Uh, the sample's originally from like an Apple commercial. Okay. From like an iPhone commercial yeah. from like twenty fourteen or something. But like, I, I grabbed the sample, did like a little, like I remixed the right. song, put it up for free. Um, somebody went ahead and and distributed it to Spotify. Fucking hack piece of shit. So he racks up forty. We million know it's a guy. Yes. Okay. Because oh, because because when when I when I when I when I DM'd him about it, because uh, I, I found his Instagram and I was like, I, I wasn't gonna be like, hey, yo, fuck you, whatever. I was just like, dude, just tell me, tell me what's going on. Like, what? Yeah. Why, why did you re-upload it? Because right. now I have to deal with Interscope because I don't own the sample. Right. So he like forcibly uploaded a song that I uploaded for free. Right. To make his own money on it, which I I. Again, I uploaded it for free. I, it was meant for. Yeah. I wrote it during the pandemic. I was just like, I threw it out there, and yeah. But um, recently, uh, Taylor Swift uh, had like a lawsuit, or what I think was Scooter Braun, uh, where she re-recorded all of her old music, yes. and regained her masters. Yes. So I thought, well, if I could just re- do the vocals myself, then we should. We should be fine. Right. So an hour before my flight to Asia, I just re redid the vocals. My mom is actually doing the oohs and ahs in the intro. Fun oh, fact, that's awesome. Because uh, her our voices are really sim- similar in timbre. Right. Um. So it was just like, hey, ma, could you like? She yeah. sent me a voice memo, and I just like yeah. threw it in. But like, so now it's it's got an official release, and um, it's you know we're we're not through through the woods yet but uh there's there's more of a silver lining than there is we can't been. play any of it right we'll get ripped because i want to, people to know well, hear I that mean, and know that it's him i i can it, it if you play it i, can, I mean it's it, it's us we can whitelist you guys on, on youtube that's all we got slushy song he's the guy um because you you're la now you left us I well heard. not forever come back to new york i, I plan i plan on move to Staten island back. please oh Staten island would be dope come to Staten island that's where I live until I'm until I move because I'm impulsive. <laughs> That's so. This is voice. your mom. Yeah. Wow. That's me. And you just did this in the hotel. These recordings, like an hour before my flight. So your crowd's gonna go nuts for this one. I, will I you sing so, the yeah. vocals live tonight, or will you play just play this? I tr- I usually I yell so much during the set that like uh, my voice is usually pretty hoarse, and when I try to hit the high, I just, it's just it, it co- either comes out great or I'm like, hey, what's up, guys? <laughs> Past lives. It just doesn't sound very good. So right. it's always fifty fifty. But yeah, because in many ways, how I'm alone up there, you're alone up there. It's just yeah. you and your DJ equipment. Right. Nobody so else is on stage with you. If I if I mess up, then it's like it's on you. It's on me. And that's How do like, you mess you know, up? How would a DJ mess up? If the music stops, or let's say I spin back too early or something, okay. like like if I like if you touch the decks at all, the song will just stop. So right. like like let's say I'm like a little tipsy yeah. going in, and I, I touch the deck, or like I've had my jacket hit the play button sometimes. Wow! And it'll just cut the music. What do you do then? I'm like, well, so I've actually taken a a, a page from the comedian. A playbook and I'll try to like crowd work a little bit until I can get the song reloaded ah. and I'll do like the whole ole 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 or you know like if you're having a good time make some noise and so I just they try almost to keep think it it's part of the show sometimes yeah. yeah you make it seamless well I, I or like DoorDash I, <laughs> DoorDash they sponsor really well they were I think they most of the sponsors are leaving. DoorDash is dope yeah <laughs> but <laughs> <laughs> but like like you know like uh, uh, having to like like pull the set back yeah. from like you know, chaos is right. like, you know, chaos. Hey, uh, plug. All right, let's play real quick. Let's play. Uh, we always do. We have people call in to the show. Um, oh, sweet. Voicemails. They can leave voicemails. They can text us. 
Um, if you call in at 347-343-3321, that's the way to get in touch with the show. That's how we do it. And we at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy is those are usually uh, the ones we pull from. Join the Patreon. We have a bunch of episodes and stuff. We will do all the Patreon episodes from home now, by the way. So that vintage Chrissy Chaos vibe with my family off camera, but on my girl and my kids, that's back. But only at patreon.com slash Christy Comedy. So here we go. Let's play this voicemail. They usually ask for some type of advice or help. Mm-hmm. So, Slushy, we're going to help them out. Let's do it. Here we go. Hey, Chrissy. So, me and my girl were at a comedy show recently where seats were assigned in a big theater. And directly behind us, we had a 400-pound, out-of-control guy that was yelling, throw-up coughing, obnoxiously laughing at everything the comic did. So, we were stuck between going and telling an usher with a risk of causing a further problem. Or getting the guy a tub of butter from the concession stand and stunt him up, but we ended up leaving, and we paid a lot of money for our seats. So I'm sure other people have been in this same predicament before, and we were wondering how you think it should be handled, as we hope to never encounter another slob de rosa of a pig at a show again. Hope to hear back from you, and we can't wait to see you in Columbus November 4th. Okay, bye. Okay, so first of all, um, I'm going to, just for my own thing now, on that show in Columbus, November 4th, I'm going to put that same person right in front of you. Uh, (laughs) I'm going to, just because I think it'll be funny, but I'll give you money back for your tickets. Unfortunately, I think that if a person at a comedy show is having a good time and laughing till they throw up, that's just how they're experiencing the show. That kind of, I think they were just having a good time, so... You can't really do anything, right? Yeah. What do you think? I mean, you can't you can't hate on somebody for having a good time. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know what I'm gonna do then? I'm gonna say from now on, if you're I'm gonna have a scale outside. If you're over 390, you can't come to my shows. Um, we can't have anyone over over 390 pounds. Unfortunately, that's gonna eliminate about 90 percent of my audience. <laughs> so we got some fatties. I mean, so uh, and, and they're the best comedy fans. He 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 did offer up a solution with the tub of butter tub of butter yeah a yeah. tub of butter actually is what but what would that do just give the like i don't understand what the tub of butter would do well i would imagine would imagine you know they'd be eating the butter pre- pre- preoccupied oh you know? i thought he needed to so we could slip out oh of the for seat. him <laughs> oh yeah i think that um i think unfortunately here's what let's let's take it back to the stoics let's take it back to epictetus mm. i think it applies here where Epictia said the path to peace is rather than expecting events to turn out in the way you want them, just welcome them in whatever way they come. And I think that this guy, he was just being like, why is this guy in front of me? He was, instead of just saying, you know what? There's a fat slob in front of me that's laughing till he pukes, mm. but I'm just going to have to deal with that and also get my money's worth of this. And, that, and this is the situation I'm in and yeah. make the best of it. So I think that's the only thing you really can do because you're not going to be able to get your money back for your seats because the person in front of you is having too good of a time. That's what yeah. that that's what that ask is. Mm-hmm. So it's not going to work. I get that. You I think have, you're going to have some fat pieces of shit at your show tonight. I mean, besides me, uh, no, you look good, dude. <laughs> you know, I uh, skinny thank mini. You. Thank you. Prize picks, baby. It is the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North. America. Prize picks is the most fun I've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season. That's a lot of money. You just select two or more players, pick more or less on their projected stats, and place your entry. Quick withdrawals, easy gameplay, and an enormous selection of players and stat types are what make prize picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Aaron Rodgers for more than three passing touchdowns and Travis Kelsey for more than 50 yards. Bang, baby! Prize Picks offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts like, t- like Taco Tuesday. Yeah. Each Tuesday, Prize Picks discounts select player projections up to 25% to provide even more value. And Prize Picks now offers Apple Play for quick and easy deposits right into your account this football season. Go to prizepicks.com slash chaos and use code chaos for a first deposit match up to 100 smackaroos, baby. That's $100. Prizepicks.com slash chaos. Use code CHAOS for a first deposit match up to $100. 
prize picks, daily fantasy sports made easy. This episode sponsored by Blue Chew. Let's talk about sex, baby. Summer's around the corner and I want you rock hard. It's not even around the corner, it's happening right now. I wanna see your rock hard penis. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets at a fraction of the cost. If you are anything like me, you can't swallow pills, you're more of a spitter, so chewable tablets work. The process is simple. You sign up at bluechew.com, consult one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive, you'll receive a prescription within days. My friend Nick Angelo loves it. The best part, it's all done online. So no visits to the doctor's office, no awkward conversations, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. And Blue Chew tablets are made right here in the USA, baby, and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package, but there will be nothing discreet about your package. You're gonna be rock fucking hard. And I love it, and I want to see it send me pics. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it, baby. And right now, for the chaos listeners, all you got to do, if you want to try Blue Chew for free, just go to bluechew.com, put in the promo code chaos. You're going to get your first month free. All you got to do is pay the $5 shipping. That's bluechew.com for more details and important safety inter information. And we thank Blue Chew for sponsoring this podcast. Can I talk to you for a moment about intermittent fasting? Sure. No, yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> what were you going to say? You feel good? Yeah. Physically? Um, I, well, so um, I used to be 325 pounds. <gasps> Let's go. Yes. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> 325 pounds. Mm -hmm. So when, how did that happen? Uh, <laughs> uh, just, you know, just uh, time and... Yeah. Uh, Really good food. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know. Um, well, being autistic too, like honestly, like they're spectrum. I used to be a pediatric physical therapist that would work with uh, children on the autism spectrum. Hmm. And a lot of times, like part of the diagnosis was like compulsive and a lot, if it, if it, you know, some of it would be eating. Like th yeah. that's just what their compulsion was. Yeah. So you have to work with them on like trying to change that compulsion to something else. Hmm. You know, the food and that, you know, it's like when a smoker, you know, stops smoking, they gain a lot of weight because it's just the act of, to the mouth right. that that's what happened so that a lot of time i don't know if that's what happened with you well it was a it, it, that actually makes a lot of sense because like i like growing I know, up i just made it up <laughs> you're like i just yeah yeah i just I, it makes a lot of sense because i just fucking took a scientific <laughs> thing that it is, isn't even real well <laughs> i i uh, i emotionally ate a lot growing up um and my bmi got really high mm -hmm. so i ended up like uh getting like the bariatric sleeve you did, yeah. Oh, it it, was, it got to that. My BM, well, my BMI was like th close to thirty or something. When like did that. you? When did you? Because every picture of you is, you know, you're thin. <laughs> you're thinned out. What, what, what did you get? Did you have success when you were much heavier as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, wow. so 2020 is actually like, if you actually, if you just look up just pictures of me, yeah, that's like, oh yeah. Well, let's go slushy fat then. Let's go. <laughs> okay, I see it. <laughs> Wow, it's interesting because there you look more Latino. Right? Isn't yeah. it interesting? It's you look weird. so much more Latino heavier. But you still don't look like intervention level heavy there. <laughs> like you don't look <laughs> yeah, like yeah, bariatric yeah. sleeve heavy. Well, it because well, but in my family, it, it all like it all is here. You know, in the gut. So like like it, it, it that like, pulls down on the aorta. Yeah. That's not good so for the like, heart. Well, it really does that. So abdominal obesity, especially in men, is not if you're going to be fat, even though I know this isn't sexy, mm. you'd want to have it. If you had to have it, you want it in your hips and butt because mm. gravity then kind of pushes it to your legs. And there's issues that happen there. But with the abdominal, with the gravity, it pulls down on your, it's called your abdominal, it's called your aorta. Mm. And the aorta is, goes like direct, it's like a tube that takes like the blood away from your heart. Like it's a vital organ. And and uh, vital artery. Hmm. So if that's pulling down on it constantly, it fucks with the blood flow of your heart, and that's how you get heart attacks. Because abdominal obesity is like by far the most dangerous type of obesity. Wow. The best place would be if just have it in your head. If you had a big fat head. Yeah, just just a. <laughs> <laughs> then you're good. Then you'd be okay. <laughs> oh wow! So Martin, see now when you were heavy here, you were mm -hmm. much heavier. You have a picture with marshmallow. Did you want to bite his head? Yeah, you know I I actually so. 
uh, whenever I whenever I see him, even now, I'll I'll, I'll slap the top of the the, the uh, helmet. Yeah, I just I've always done that since. But the you know what he looks like on it. without the helmet. You've seen his yeah. actual face. Yeah. Wow. Is he's, he cute? He's fucking ugly. <laughs> no, no, yeah, no, he's <laughs> yeah. He, he's he's just a normal dude. Yeah. 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 Just a reg. Yeah, I did a, I did a video with him once for his TikTok, but I don't think I I don't think I made it into it. We did some funny stuff. I kept trying to kiss his m- marshmallow lips. <laughs> yeah. It is so amazing to me how much more Latino you look. It, 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 it is what you've noticed this about you, right? Yeah. Like there, it's, it's no doubt about it. Like I would say, we, this is a Latino person. But like I'm trying on. to but pinpoint, now, like I don't uh, know what you are. Why I'm been trying to pinpoint that for the longest time. Like what, what is? Because even that's kind of recent. But like, is it is it the facial hair? Is it the? It might be. I don't know. You're also much younger. You you're more you know you're much younger looking. You're younger there. But you do look. It is it. It is very interesting. But I'm, you're happy now with your body now. Yeah. And well, and 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 I I only did it because like like I, my dream when I started DJing was to be able to like jump on the decks and like dance on top of like okay. the, the table and everything. And I couldn't do that because again, like I get one leg up and I'm like exhausted. Right. So now I can I can dance the whole hour and a half, get on the decks, like actually. You know, because I would see like Steve Aoki, like Skrillex, yeah. those guys, like always just, you know, doing acrobats on the stage and like. Do you work out you know. and stuff now? Not re- I, I want to get into it, you know. Right. Uh, I'm just like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm pretty lazy. Well, but no, but but it's, but it's, it's a, everything's a process in life. I feel like sometimes we want to do everything all at once when it's like, I've realized, you know, I'm 38 now, about to be 39. Like mm. slow and steady wins the race, as I've heard since I'm a kid. But sometimes it just takes just living life to be like, oh, that's. Like I would always try to do when I would diet and exercise, I'd try to be like mm. a f- switch would go off. It'd be like, I'm 250 pounds. I gotta, I'm not eating bread. I'm working out every day, blah, blah. And then that would last for two months and then it never happens. Where now mm. it's like, I know I'm not going back to the way I was because it's just been so slow and gradual because mm. I've changed the entire way I just live my life. I've, I've changed, like even today, I did not feel like working out at all. I, I didn't want to do it. So mm-hmm. I just listened to my body and I said, m- m- what I used to do is either go work out and, and just have a bullshit workout and be depressed at the workout and make me eat more. Mm-hmm. Or I would just not work out at all and that would snowball into the next day and the next day and the next day. But instead what I said to said, listen, you don't want to work out. Life is about, it's all about momentum in life. It's like, it's the good days. Everything's easy on the good days. That's, that's, those are the days where it, th- those don't even count. It's good. It's the bad days is what like makes you a, a person. Like, how do you react when you get knocked down? How mm. how is it? How are you reacting when things are bad? So today I was like, I don't feel like doing it. So how am I going to react? I'm just going to do ten minutes. I'm just going to do ten minutes to keep my momentum going. And then mm. what happened? That ten minutes turned into thirty. And I didn't have the best workout. But when you went, when I went in of an expectation of saying I'm only going to do ten, and then I did three times that, mm. I felt positive leaving. And then I and then it, and then the whole day got better. So I, I've learned that now, but because I, I used to be like, it all has to happen right now. If I would be working out for a month, be like, I don't see anything yet. I'm fucked. And it's like, no, it's mm. just a process. Yeah. So you've lost the weight. So the fact that you're not working out yet is okay because that's going to come. That's yeah. going to come. You're gradually, you're getting bigger. And I feel like weight loss, it's always like down a little bit, up a little bit, down a little bit, up a little bit. And then you got to look at the course of six months. You're, you're, you, you know, you trended down. Right. You know, things and, and like that. Like every, any, any time I like gain a, like like gain back a bit i always think like well yeah it's better than being like i i'm like essentially half of what i was right so i'm like i'm just like yeah. you I'll, know well now that we're friends when he, when i notice you gaining i'll tweet it publicly yeah. no say, I, absolutely no gain. <laughs> keep me in check <laughs> i'll say hey what's up fatty i'll just yeah. i'll just yeah. tweet pics now so you know. L- looking, looking a bit big these days bro. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um wow man okay so so that's good, dude. And 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 yeah, bro. It's uh so the rest of your day, so the day just real quickly with the day of a DJ. Mm. So you you woke you got in, you're hungover, you woke up, you came to do this podcast, your show's not now for another twelve hours, and then what does a DJ do for the do you look over your set list? What are you gonna do? Um I'll probably probably uh just edit my set list a little bit. Uh and I don't know. Uh, well I actually I think I might have a shoot today. What do you mean? A shoot? Like a like just a like Across the city, like location, uh, like a photo shoot. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. And th- th- like, it's just like for your album, just or just because. Just, just because, like you know. Well, so with you have to be intentional with this stuff, which is I like about you. Yeah, because I don't do that enough sometimes in my mm-hmm. career. I'm just like, I'll let somebody else tell me I I need to do a shoot today. 
but you are like I'm I'm about my brand. Hmm. So you're doing the shoot. Well, I I like how when I say something you just go hmm sometimes and it's, that's and then you, it, it no, just no, gives no. me a pause where I'm just like what do you just shut up Chris. No, no. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's that's from my like so I've <laughs> been to Japan too many times. Right. And everything you never go too many times. Mm, is like right. mm, is yes. Like right. you you n is actually yes. So like ah I'm going mm, yeah. Mm. Right. Like I'm like attentive but right. like <laughs> you know I'm like hmm. Mm. That's hmm. what it is. Japanese women they have great feet, a lot of men say. Yeah. Did you notice they, that? They, they do. Do they have them out a lot, like in public? Not not really. I mean, right. sometimes you'll see some like high heels. Right. And it's I, and it's it's a sight to behold. We need more <laughs> Japanese women in New York. We don't have enough Japanese women here. Yeah. It just in, we need to be more Japanese women we here. We need in general. more Japanese people because the Japanese person is a, it's a, it's a, they're very they're amazing. Are they the top Asians? I mean, sushi, come on got to be Japanese. Sushi, yeah. ramen, anime. Right. You know. Right. Uh, the Walkman. And by the way, where'd the name Slushy come from? So it was, an, it was originally sushi. And Japanese. Yeah. Foot fetish. Right. <laughs> Foot fetish. Exactly. So yeah. I, was, I was on Wikifeet. And, uh, yes. You know, uh, so it was, it was uh, sushi originally. And then I, 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 uh, I'll misspeak sometimes. So I said slushy instead ah. of sushi. And I was like. You know, because sushi was taken already. So I was like, sushi, slushy, that works. And then, you know, to t bring it back to the Japan thing, like the uh, the word for cute in Japanese is kawaii, which has two eyes at the end. Okay. So I took the two eyes and I made slushy cute. I like it. Yeah. That's very cute. Do people bring slushies to your show? A every now and then. It's, That's it's cool. It's not very common, but it happens every now and then. All right. Well, we're going to Lavo tonight. I'm going to try to make it, dude. Yeah. I, I am. My intention. I have a bag. My intention is to go, but just know if I text you, and I'm like, it's just because I'm I'm I, I'm gonna fall asleep. No, no, dude. But like, I'm gonna like, try. I I I totally get that. I, I've I miss, I've missed Paramore in concert. Really? Because I've like I've had like you know I I just, I just come Paramore. back. I love Haley Williams so much. She's man. great. You guys have she has pink hair. Or yeah. She had it for a little while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I like Paramore. I'd love Paramore, dude. So it's slushy, much, dude. dude. Slushy's on the fucking pod, baby. Dude, we're out How great here. Great with Slushy, man. Slushy Where can chaos. people see your shows? Um. Oh, just like in general? Yeah. What's What's the website? Oh, slushy.com. dot com. Easy, um, bro. Uh, Instagram is just at slushy. Slushy dude. music on everything else. How great yeah. was this rum coffee, dude? It's called horchata. Dude, so good. Like that. Do you speak Spanish? No hablar en español. Wow. Same. Nah. Ya govorit paruski. I speak a little Russian. How do you speak Russian? I had a Russian ex. Whoa. Very weird. Well, 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 you know, just like it was, it's random that like I don't speak Spanish at all, but I speak a bit of Russian and a bit of Japanese. I, I just, I love everyone. Uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I do love everyone. Truly, I really do. Even truly. like terrorists, like they're misunderstood. Like you would, you know, like I don't, sim I don't want them to hurt me, but it's like, you know, they're people. Everybody's got the same desires, dude. It will end, and I well, I will say everybody has been hurt. Yeah, you know we've all been hurt. I I, I don't know how the fuck that tax on the, that, but like that's yeah, that's what it is. We'll put that out of context. Yeah, yeah, right, right. I don't know. They're slushy, dude. I fucking <laughs> dude. It's what I love about you is you look. You don't. If I saw that, I'd be like there's no. This person looks like he's in Antifa, but you're not that at all. You're not. You're the opposite of that. And well, but but I don't know, actually, that's the thing about you is I don't know where you stand politically. I don't know where you stand religiously. I still don't know where you stand sexually. But the only thing I do know is that your energy is positive and I like you and I'm drawn to you. And I think that's what's cool about you. I want to spread positivity. Dude, you're like, spreading it, baby. Mm -hmm. Go fix your toe. Yeah. Oh, my God. All right. This has been Chrissy Chaos. Woo. <laughs>